Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Harmer. This is video 18, and today we're talking about the reverb. So as per usual, let's load up a default patch, and let's go to the Effects tab and look at our reverb located right below the chorus and to the left-hand side of the compression. So let's listen to it without reverb first. So basic saw wave and then reverb on. So we can tell that there's an effect there. And before we dive into these sliders and all this here, if you kind of just want a quick preset or re reverb or anything like that, if you don't want to mess with this stuff here, this little arrow has a lot of presets. So there's classic, large hall, cathedral, the venue, drum room, and small studio. So you can flip between these. I always like these last two, the drum room and small studio. It kind of just gives a little bit of openness. It's not like a huge reverb effect, but it kind of does sound like it's in a room of some sort. So it's kind of nice. So let's go to the classic and let's talk about this a little bit. So the first things first you're going to see here is this F here. And at the top left, you're going to see it on the tooltip what it means. So this means flat. So it's really not really any enhancing of the lows or the highs. If we scroll all the way to the top, it's going to be warmer plus, so we're going to be warmer. And then this one, just with a W, is going to be warm, bright, and then bright plus. So basically what they're doing is, if you go all the way to the warmer, check, check out the low frequencies here. Let's bring this up a little bit more, and let's open up everything here. Then we'll go to bright. So we can see it with with the with the bright. It's a lot less of the low end here, and a little bit more of the highs. So it kind of gives you a little bit of difference between do you want your reverb to sound a little bit more low endy, a little softer, a little warmer, or do you kind of want less low end and a little little bit of a brighter tone to it? So that's what this control is going to do here. So for this purpose, let's leave this on flat, so really no change. And these first two sliders are going to be your input filters. So this first one is going to be for the low cut. So as we drag this up, we're going to be cutting fr the frequencies fr from the input sound going into the reverb. So if we bring this up to, let's say, at the top left, 100, so that means anything below 100 is not even going to enter this reverb. And as you drag that up, so now it's 3.5K, that's not going to enter the reverb. So this is useful in the sense that you don't really want something super, super low endy going into the reverb and clouding your sound. So if we drag this maybe to like 100 or something like that, and then the top end is also helpful too, and this is gonna cut some of the really high top end off of it as well. And it starts around 23K or so, which is pretty up there. So if we drag this down to maybe like 13 or something, so it's a little bit more realistic than up here. Because a lot of the times you don't want the reverb of, to sound or to reverberate the very high top of your sound frequency. So that's kind of what that does. Um, it's good to set that kind of first to have a base idea of what you want your reverb to sound like or your sound going into this module. Next, we're going to have the pre-delay. So this is going to be the delay, how long it takes for the reverb sound to take an effect. So if we drag this up, it's going to be measured in the BPM, as we can see up here with one, two, and three, and four, five, and so on and so forth. But if we drag it downwards, now we can set it in milliseconds, so a little bit more precise. So if we did all the way up here at the top, and let's get a lot of a wet signal here, and let's see how apparent that is. So it kind of almost like an echo reverb in that sense if it's really, really high up there. So some of that can be useful too, just a little bit of that. A little bit of that pre-delay gets the the clarity of your sound out first, and then the reverb kind of comes and tails in after it to kind of wrap it all up, so to speak. So you can have a more clear, distinct sound, and then the reverb follows just by using a little bit of amount of that as well. So something to think about. So let's put that back to center here, and then next we have size. So size is going to be basically putting whatever your sound is in a room, how big that room is going to be. Do you want a really small room, like a small bedroom, or do you want a cathedral type of sound? So if we went here to this preset and we looked at cathedral, we can see the size is way up there. And if we went to like small studio, the size is much further down here. So this is basically kind of creating with the algorithm a sound that is in a big room, that is in a small room, so on and so forth. So that's what this slider is going to help you do.
Let's go back to classic here. Then next up, this diffusion up. So over here at the top, it kind of can sound, the reverb can, can sound cloudy, maybe noisy, more, more diffused, so to speak. There's more stuff in the room. Things are bouncing off a little bit more. But if it's very low down here, let's turn the wet up here as well. At the very bottom, the reverb sounds very distinct. You can almost visualize the, the reverberation. At the top, it seems a little more spread out, a little maybe bigger in that sense. It's a very fine-tuned control for this one here. And then next up, we have the decay. So how long is it going to take for the reverb to finally go away? We put up here. That reverb is going to linger on for quite a while. And all the way down here. Goes away pretty quick. And then the dampening. So this one's kind of interesting because it's kind of related to these first inputs. The only difference is, is that this dampening is basically going to set a certain frequency to start dampening that sound at. So let's, if I drag, drag this all the way to the top, then bring it down here. You can see it's a lot softer. The, the top end here is cut off on these other ones here. And the difference is, is this input filter here is basically going to chop off the frequencies before it even gets to the reverb. And then this one here is kind of going to work on those frequencies and dampen them a little bit more over time. So that's the difference between the input cut here and the, uh, the dampening as well. I would always suggest to use this dampening at least a little bit. This should be a staple slider in any reverb patch, unless you're going for that type of sound, but to me it sounds very metallic and very fake. So if you drag this down, it sounds a little bit better, and especially if you have a warmer sound to it too. And the next up, we have the wet. This is the last slider here. And this is basically going to determine how much of that reverb signal that you want in your final sound. So it does go up and it does go down. So it's kind of similar with, with Harmer, how it has an inverse polarity and a opposite polarity. So depending on your patch, you might find it sounds a little bit better going downwards than it does going upwards. So that's kind of to taste. So if we have zero down here or something, it's pretty much like the reverb's off if we have it all the way up. 100% wet. So that's pretty much reverb in a nutshell. Definitely experiment with it as well. It's uh, it's one of those things that once you kind of get a feel with, with these sliders here, it's going to be a lot easier to uh, kind of dial in your own type of reverb and how you kind of want it to sound. Once you visualize a room or visualize a space, you can kind of get close to recreating this in this module as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.